Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about RNA processing in eukaryotes. So RNA is ribonucleic acid and it is formed in the nucleus after transcription from DNA as you all know. So suppose uh, this is an eukaryotic cell with a nice little cell uh, membrane in the nucleus. Um, in the nucleus you have the DNA which will be transcribed to mRNA and this mRNA ultimately will form proteins. So this is transcription and this is translation. Now one thing to remember, this transcription occurs within nucleus and after transcription the mRNA goes out to the cytoplasm and then it's translated to proteins in the raphendoplasmic reticulum uh, with the help of tRNA. Okay. So before the mRNA can go to the cytoplasm, it needs to go, some, go through some processes. And also after reaching cytoplasm, sometimes it also goes to, through some processes. But the processing that occurs in the nucleus are the main. So let's see what the processing occurs. So the mRNA processing in the nucleus. So the, this is the main processing mechanism of mRNA. And the initial transcript is called heterogeneous nuclear RNA because you see if, if you say this is an mRNA molecule with a 5 prime end here and a 3 prime end here uh, it has a lot of uh, exons and introns and exons and introns so you have a heterogeneous population of information from exons and introns and we actually don't want the introns we don't want them to be translated because if, if that does happen, uh, the protein that we will get will be a non-functional protein. So we want to get them out or cut them out. Okay, so so the population we see here is a heterogeneous population and that's why it's called a heteronuclear RNA and we want a homogeneous population consisting only of exons. Okay, so this mRNA is also called a precursor mRNA because this mRNA will be processed and will form a mature mRNA which will be ready for translation and for giving a new nice proteins. Okay. So that we have to do three main processes and it's very easy because you see we have to do one process at the 5 prime end, one process at the 3 prime end and one process at the middle. So the first process that you need uh, is a very nice process because it's in the, in the 5 prime end of the mRNA it's very susceptible to damage by exonucleases so exonucleases can damage the 5 prime end and that's why you need to uh, have a nice little covering here to protect this end from the damage by exonuclease okay and this is this cap is called 7 methyl guanosine cap and we'll talk about it later another thing is polyadenylation of 3 prime end so this is the 3 prime end and it will add up a lot of adenine residues suppose n number of adenine residues in the 3 prime end and as we have already mentioned we'll cut off the introns and let them go out and we'll only it will only leave the exons for what we really want so capping polyadenylation and splicing and after those processes the mRNA will leave the nucleus and uh, bound to the specific packaging proteins and then uh, will be translated or will be processed further depending on the situation okay so let's talk a brief about 5 prime capping so I've already mentioned that the 5 prime end is very susceptible to damage by exonucleases so in the 5 prime end we need to put some covering and this is putting covering occurs during transcription I mean when the steel the mRNA is uh, is lengthening and the 5 prime end we, we put a 7 methyl guanosine residual so 7 methyl guanosine so it has two steps very simple two steps first we need to place the guanine here and then we will actually methylate the guanine so addition of the guanine and then methylation 
of the guanine cap at the seventh position and this addition of the guanine to the fibrinoid is special and there is actually formation of a five prime to five prime bond which is very special because you know that in the mrna or dna the bonds are actually five prime to three prime bonds so those are the most common bonds or maybe three prime to five prime bonds so so you see that either five or three prime in, in different directions but th there is no five prime to five prime bond uh, in mrna or dna but in case of five prime capping the seven methyl guanosine cap is actually bound to the five prime end with a five prime to five prime linkage and uh, this addition of the guanine is uh, uh, is very easy to remember and this addition is mediated by guanyl transferase so guanyl transfer is the enzyme which transfers guanine to the five prime end and also methylation of the guanine cap is also needed and it is done in the seven prime end so methyl transfers so an enzyme a transfers enzyme which transfer methyl to the seven prime end of guanine is called guanine seven methyl transfers very easy to remember and the main job that i've already mentioned is to protect mrna from degradation by cellular exonucleus this is the main thing you must remember uh, among all those points so five prime cramping is for protection so you don't want the code in mrna to be broken down and leading to formation of a non-functional or truncated protein you need it to be the way that it is transcribed okay so so this this process will uh, actually protect protect the mrna so this is very important you need to protect so you need to protect and you need to fire prime capping let's uh, go to the next slide uh, another thing that i will mention that uh, you do in the three prime end is the addition of the polyatyl or polyadenine tail and uh, this is actually uh, mediated by poly polymerase so uh, it's a polymerase because it's adding a lot of adenines and it's adding a and that's why it's called a poly a polymerase okay and the very important thing or uh, a bizarre thing is that there is no template required and this is very bizarre actually because suppose dna polymerase or rna polymerase all the polymerase needs some template and they will build the uh, dna's or rna's on according to the template but but this poly polymerase does not need template and it's also simple why should it need temple template because it just adds a it just adds a adding its job is so simple it doesn't need a strand or template very simple so it doesn't need any template and uh, when does this polyapolymers get activated the answer should be if there is a, a, a double a u and triple a signal so adenine adenine uracil adenine 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 signal in the three prime end this will be identified by the polyapolymerase and it, it will start adding adenines adenine residues in the three prime end and how many about 20 to 250 okay so this polyatyl is actually like a time bomb or a timer and as the mrna ages this polyatyl is gradually decayed and ultimately it will lead to degradation of the mrna okay so it's like a timer okay. the another thing that uh, we needed to do is, is in the middle so in the middle of the five prime and three prime end uh, we have exons and introns and we need to uh, get the introns right here you have to see one exon here one exon here and there are multiple other exons and introns in two sides so we need to get the intron out of the mrna so to do that we need someone to help us and the helper substance or helper molecule is called snrnp or small nuclear ribonucleoproteins so those are small little molecules present in the nucleus which binds to the introns 
and after binding to the intron it actually alters the structure of the intron and forms a lariat like structure like that and after formation of that la la lariat like structure like that and the bond between exons and introns are actually broken down higher that this bond is broken down and actually this bond will also be eventually broken down and it will release the lariat like structure from the exons so this lariat structure will also go into dissociation to again snrnps so those are snrnps and the lariat intron so the intron that we intended to remove is now removed and thanks to you simile rx i have i have took to this uh, image from rx okay so uh, one thing one other thing snrnps are also called snarps uh, in a little form so snarps okay so let's go to the next slide uh, splicing uh, in, in splicing we have already seen that uh, snrnps are important and jams or important uh, mediators and in case of SLE or systemic lopacerythromatosis, antibodies can form against SNRNPs, and which is also called anti-Smith antibody. And this antibody is very specific. Remember what is specific? Specific is telling or getting a negative test when it's negative. Okay, it's very specific. And also, we can remember that in SLE, ANA is a screening test because it's very sensitive. DSDNA is also a very specific test and also in case of drug induced SLE you will have antihistone antibody okay so this is all okay. and also in case of mixed connective tissue disease you can have anti u1 ribonucleoprotein antibody so you can remember that mixed connective tissue disease is actually a mixture of SLE uh, systemic sclerosis or even polymyositis okay so uh, after doing those processes in the five prime and the three prime and then in the middle we now can have our mRNA to the site of action in the cytoplasm so in the cytoplasm most of the mRNAs will most of the mRNAs will go associate with the ribosomes so suppose this is the ribosome, ribosome, and it will be translated to form a protein. Okay. So most of the RNAs go through this pathway. But some mRNA, some mRNA will will actually bind to not ribosomes, rather something called a P body. And these P bodies are actually quality controller of the mRNA. So so th those P bodies are quality controller and they, they regulate the rate of mRNA and they, they also regulate the turnover of mRNA. And how it does is it has a lot of things to do that, to that job. And one is exonucleases, which will actually bro break down the mRNA. Another is decapping enzyme, so which will break down the five prime. 7 methylguanosine cap also called TK and also and very fun is it has some micro RNAs which can actually silence silence the mRNA it's, it's very uh, bizarre and one another thing is it can also store mRNA so this is also good to know so this 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 is very important for USMLE very important okay so this is also in the USMLE world and the fast state also so this is given very uh, important topic it's a high yield topic so thanks for watching the video and that's all from me